Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a green-white hate boars deck, which is my take on the green-white hate bears archetype in historic. And the deck is highlighted by Yasharn, Implacable Earth from Zendikar Rising, a 4-mana 4-4 legendary elemental boar that when it enters the battlefield lets us search up a basic forest and basic plains and put it into our hand. And players can't pay life or sacrifice non-land permanents to cast spells or activate abilities, which does have quite a few implications in the historic format. For instance, if this shuts down Skirk Prospector from the Goblins deck, it can shut down various sacrifice creatures like Priests of Forgotten Gods out of the Junt Sacrifice decks, and it also stops the Neoform combo deck from working, since the opponent can't sacrifice a creature to a Neoform, so plenty of situations where Yasharn can come in handy. And then another new addition from Zeneca Rising is Skyclave Apparition, a 3-mana 2-2 core spirit that when it enters the battlefield lets us exile up to one target non-land, non-token permanent you don't control with converted mana cost 4 or less. And when Skyclave Apparition leaves the battlefield, the exiled card's owner creates an XX blue illusion creature token where X is the converted mana cost of the exiled card. So now we finally have access to a removal spell in creature form that we get to play in a Umori the Collector deck, which limits our deck to only casting creature spells. And it's been a while since I've been looking for this Banisher Priest type effect. I remember when building the Oketra's Monument deck a while back, I was surprised that we didn't have access to this type of effect before, but now we finally do. And then another new addition from Zendikar Rising is Archon of Amiria, a 3-mana 2-3 flyer, saying each player can't cast more than one spell each turn, so that part of the effect is symmetrical. And then non-basic lands your opponent's control enter the battlefield tapped, so this only affects the opponent's lands, and Historic is filled with lots of non-basic lands that the Archon can punish to slow down the opponent while we try and apply pressure, and limiting each player to casting one spell per turn also benefits us, since our deck is built with that effect in mind. We typically cast one big heavy hitting creature per turn, and then we also have a few activated abilities that we can sink or spare mana into. We've got the three mana for Umori to put it into our hand, so that's another way to make use of our spare mana. And then Archon also shuts down a few combo decks, thinking again of the Neoform and Seagate Stormcaller combo deck. The opponent won't be able to cast two spells in the same turn, so they essentially won't be able to combo off. And there's a lot of other examples where Archon is going to be great for us. And then at 2 mana we also have Lotus Cobra from Zendikar Rising, the 2-1 snake that says whenever land enters the battlefield under our control, we can add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool, so it can help us ramp into our heavy hitting creatures ahead of schedule, and also synergizes nicely with Fabled Passage and Knight of the Reliquary, which we'll get to in a second. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At 1 mana we've got the full playset of Lenor Elves to help us ramp into our powerful creatures ahead of schedule. Potentially sets up a turn 2 Knight of the Reliquary into a turn 3 Elder Gargaroth, which is a great curve. Then at 2 mana we've got some more Hate Bears with 2 copies of Containment Priest, a 2-2 Human Cleric with Flash saying if a non-token creature would enter the battlefield and it wasn't cast, exile it instead. So Containment Priest shuts down a lot of different cards in the historic metagame. For instance, Muxus out of the Goblins deck wouldn't be able to put any Goblins in play. We can flash in Containment Priest in response to Collected Company, and those creatures will be exiled instead. Containment Priest also stops reanimation effects, which can also be useful against the Red Black Arcanist deck playing Claim to Fame, and we can even use Containment Priest to shut down the new Neoform combo deck, as those creatures aren't actually cast, so they will be exiled instead. So plenty of applications where Containment Priest is useful. Next up we've got three copies of Thalia Guardian of Thraben, which is a staple of the Sade Bears decks, a 2-mana two 2-1 two legendary human soldier with first strike, saying non-creature spells costs one more mana to cast. Now if this effect is symmetrical, but we just don't have any non-creature spells in the deck, so it's only going to affect the opponent, and taxing every spell for one additional mana does definitely add up, so against any control decks or decks playing lots of non-creature spells, Thalia is going to be a nightmare to face on the other side of the battlefield. Then we've got our four copies of Lotus Cobra, and two copies of Scavenging Ooze, giving us additional graveyard hate, and also just a good creature in any grindy matchup, where lots of creatures end up in the graveyard, as Ooze will be able to gobble them up and gain a bit of life back, and put additional plus one plus one counters on itself. Then at 3 mana we've got our 4 copies of Knight of the Reliquary, which is one of the main win conditions in the deck. A 3 mana 2-2 two -two human knight that gets plus 1 plus 1 for each land card in our graveyard, so it has great synergy with Fabled Passage, which will end up in the graveyard naturally. 
And then we can tap Knight of the Reliquary and sacrifice a Forest or Plains. It doesn't even have to be a basic land. So we can also sacrifice Temple Garden to the Knight. And then we can search our library for any land card and put it on the battlefield untapped. So Knight of the Reliquary also essentially ramps us, since we can first float mana for the land we're about to sacrifice, and then search a land that comes into play untapped. So the Knight ramps us for one, which is very useful. Then the knight also kind of fuels itself by putting additional lands in the graveyard, so the knight gets bigger and bigger. We often want to search up additional copies of Fabled Passage with the knight's ability, which we can then also sacrifice to find more basic lands. So we put an additional land in the graveyard for knight, and knight can also find various utility lands. We've got one copy of Blast Zone, one Bonders Enclave, and one Crawling Barons that the knight can search up, which can be useful in different situations. And of course, those land slots are very customizable, so you can easily change some lands around if you want to improve certain matchups. So the knight does a lot of different things, and of course is just a giant creature in the late game that can help us close out the game. And Yasharn also doesn't interfere with our Knight of the Reliquary or with our Fabled Passage, since it specifically mentions the non-land permanence can be sacrificed, so we can still totally use the knight's ability while Yasharn's in play, and Yasharn also helps us find additional forest and plains to sacrifice to the knight's ability in the first place. Then besides our two copies of Yasharn, we also have one copy of Linvala, Keeper of Silence, a 4-mana 3-4 Legendary Angel with Flying, saying activated abilities of creatures your opponent's control cannot be activated. So this does a few similar things to Yasharn, but it also shuts down mana creatures in addition to Yasharn, and various other activated abilities that don't require a sacrifice, so nice to have a 1 of Linvala in the deck. And then we also have two copies of Shalai, Voice of Plenty, a 4-mana 3-4 Legendary Angel with Flying, saying you, Planeswalkers you control, and other creatures you control have Hexproof. So this is great against any burn decks, as they'll first have to kill Shalai before they can keep burning our face. Can also shut down Hand Disruption or cards like Settle the Wreckage if they're still played. And we also get a nice activated ability for 6 mana, putting a plus 1 plus 1 counter on each creature we control. Sadly, we don't have Gavany Township in Historic, which would have been an awesome land to search up with Nanda Reliquary. But Shalai gives us a similar effect, sinking our extra mana into putting plus 1 plus 1 counters everywhere. And it's also useful if we have Archon of Amiria preventing us from casting multiple spells in the same turn. And then last but not least, we've got three copies of Elder Gargoroth, which is a great way to close out the game once we shut down the opponent, as we get a 5-mana 6-6 six, six with Vigilance, Reach and Trample. And whenever Gargoroth attacks or blocks, we can either make a 3-3 three, three Beast Token, gain 3 life or draw a card, so lots of useful abilities. And then going over the mana base, we've got plenty of basic lands to go with our Knight of the Reliquary. So we've got 6 Plains and 4 Forests, as well as 4 Temple Garden, which we can still sacrifice to the Knight. And then we've got 4 of the Green-White Pathway, which gives us additional untapped green sources to play the turn 1 Elf, as well as giving us additional white sources to play cards like Skyclave Apparition on Curve. And then we've got some utility lands here, with Blast Zone to blow up permanence. Bonders Enclave to draw additional cards, especially nice with Knight of the Reliquary, and then Crawling Barons as a nice win condition against some more controlling decks, and then we've got our four copies of Fabled Passage, which is also great with Knight and Lotus Cobra. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a pretty nice hand. Turn 1 Elf, turn 2 Knight of the Reliquary, Cobra plays nicely with Knights as well. Facing basic islands into Castle Ventress and search for Ascanta. All right, I'm gonna regret not having Field of Ruin in my deck now, but that's okay. So what's my play here? Lotus Cobra. Can play a land, make a mana, and then Knight can find another land and make another mana, so we can play Shalai. Probably just get another. Forest here. Opponent is on blue white, so Wrath of God is going to be a pretty tough one to beat here. Thalia can prevent my opponent from casting a Wrath. Of course, they could have a counter spell here. How much mana can I make? Fable Passage is essentially 2 mana. 
So I could technically Pleomori and Thalia. I think I'm just going to cast Thalia. And see if it resolves. And if it gets countered, we'll uh, take it from there. Yep, and gets absorbed, so my opponent's probably going to cast a Wrath next turn. Which is not great news for me. So do I just want to draw a card of Enclave first? I guess we'll just activate Shalai here. See if we can dodge a Wrath of God effect. Well, it looks like we can. And shall I dos prevent Settled Wreckage from being cast? So that's a win. And Apparition can also potentially excel Search. Let's draw a card. And we'll attack. Cast out XL Shalai, but they're still taking 11 here. Sweet. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Couple mana creatures into a bit of disruption. And this could be the Neoform deck, in which case Archon's gonna be great. Could essentially shut down their combo on turn two. And yeah, we do see Steam Vents, so. Definitely looks like the Neoform deck, and I'm just gonna play Archon here and then prevent any shenanigans from happening. Shimmer possibility, yep. Definitely looks like a combo deck to me. So they need removal for Archon, but we've got a second one. And in the meantime, it can apply a bit of pressure. Containment Priest also shuts down the Neoform combo, so we definitely have a lot of hate cards for this matchup. And the fact that Containment Priest has Flash is actually quite nice, since that means we can play Thalia in our turn, or some other creature, and then Priest in the opponent's turn. Is it better than playing another Archon here? Yeah, probably. Just play Thalia, and then Priest in the opponent's turn. Wall of Blossoms. It's gonna halt some of our aggression, but that's okay. And yeah, our opponent explodes, just too many hate cards, and the Neoform decks don't have a lot of removal, so if they just don't get to remove the Archon, they can't really win, and without combo the deck is pretty weak. So yeah, goes to show how effective some of our hate cards can be. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine hand, especially if our opponent's playing a Lurus Core Spirit Dancer deck, because then having double Apparition is one of our better cards in the matchup. Can fetch a Forest turn one, so we can play turn two Cobra. And does look like a Spirit Dancer deck, so yeah, double Apparition is going to put in some work. Let's see if they start putting stuff on the Ornithopter. All that glitters, so... Definitely into just getting rid of the Ornithopter here. Yasharn could also be nice. 
I could wait an extra turn on Apparition. That's probably okay, actually. And make the opponent put even more stuff on Ornithopter before we exile it. Could backfire if they have an Alsaid. Arcane Flights. Alright, Apparition's looking good, so I can go Cobra. Don't even have to play my Fable Passage, can just play a normal Forests. Suppose with Fable Passage I can also put uh, Omori in my hands, but can do that next turn. And yeah, opponent just explodes as soon as their Ornithopter gets dealt with. Their hand could just be all auras with no creatures to enchant, so they're gonna be hopelessly behind. So yeah, drawing the apparition in this specific matchup is very important. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Thalia for a bit of disruption, Cobra for a bit of ramp to go with our knights. And then knight can find all sorts of mana sinks to spend all that mana that we get from Cobra. All right, sadly, turn on Firebrand. We'll put a damper on our start here. I think I give them Cobra and then keep Thalia for later, since assuming this is a mono red deck, Thalia is going to be very important for us. Wayward Guide Beasts, interesting. I guess I'll take it. And they've got a burn spell for the Cobra. Another Thalia. So I can go Cobra into Thalia. Might see Firebrand kill Thalia. Double Guide Beast does mitigate the drawback of uh, Guide Beast having to pick up a land, but this attack is a little strange into a First Striker. Would have expected them to uh, kill my Thalia. So we'll just kill the Firebrand, which can otherwise kill Thalia. And a Score Spitter. Shalai can also stop any burn spells. Or we can play Knight of the Reliquary. I've got some options. Um. I guess I don't even have to sacrifice my Fabled Passage yet. I'll play Shall I? And pass a turn. Well, they must have some uh, pump spells here, maybe. But I don't mind losing Thalia when we have a backup. And then Shalai maybe blocks Spitter, so a 2 damage burn spell is not enough to finish off Shalai, and they need a 3 damage one. Sure. Alright, they do have Infuriates for 2 mana, thanks to Thalia. That's okay. So we are down to 5, but we do have Shalai preventing any burn spells from killing us, and our opponent has to pick up all their lands. Another Cobra. And then I guess we'll play Knight for now. Playing Thalia could also be decent. But I kind of want to get this knight going with double cobra. Then I don't really want to lose my Shalai to an Infuriate necessarily. So let's just block like this. So that puts me to one.
and ooze is gonna be amazing here. So let's float some mana. Get Fabled Passage. And gobble up some creatures. And our point explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a very slow hand with no mana creatures, no elves, no cobra, no knight of the reliquary. So getting to five for Gargroth is going to be a little bit ambitious. So we'll take a mulligan. This is better. And now I have to decide what to get rid of. It is tempting to keep Cobra Knight and Gergroth, since Cobra Knight can help us ramp into Gergroth. Although Thalia could be important disruption in the matchup as well. I think I'm gonna get rid of Thalia and take a bit of a gamble here. Suppose playing the planes turn one was slightly better in case we drew apparition and need a double white. Interesting. Serpent on a colorless ramp deck here with Guardian Idol turn two. Well, I'm gonna stick to the plan and play knights. And next turn knights. Can generate a ton of mana with Lotus Cobra. Can maybe get a Fabled Passage as well. So opponent's probably ramping into Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which, you know, it's going to be pretty difficult to beat if they can resolve it. So Thalia would have been quite strong in this matchup. So... I can play Cobra... Make double green. Use knights. Could get a fabled passage, or I can get a utility land here. Uh, there's already blast zone in play to maybe blow up all two drops to get rid of the opponent's ramp. But I do want to get Gargroth in play first. Could get a crawling barons. I guess I'll just go for fabled passage here. And then I don't have to sacrifice Fable Passage yet, and I can save it for next turn to make more mana. Or I can put Umori into my hand. Um, let's see, if I sacrifice this now, I can also put an extra counter on Blast Zone, so maybe that's going to be my play. But I don't have to decide just yet. So opponent can't play Ugin Spirit Dragon this turn, they're one mana short. It's going to be Golos Tireless Pilgrim instead. Which gets the Cascading Cataracts, which can make the mana needed to activate Golos. And then I'm just going to level up my Blast Zone here. Alright, so I've got a few different options. Uh, Gergroth and Knight can both attack. If my opponent blocks with Golos, we can sack Blast Zone to grow the Knights. I guess I can play my pathway. Make some mana with Cobra. Play Archon. And then attack with everyone. Draw a card with Gergroth.
and then I can use Blast Zone to grow my Knight at instant speed should they block with Golos. And otherwise I can let damage happen first to get in one more damage. Opponent can sacrifice Mind Stone to draw a card. Alright, so... At least her opponent can cast Ugin. Void comes into play tapped thanks to Archon. And her opponent's facing two lethal threats. And her opponent explodes. Awesome. So Blast Zone coming in handy. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. And then I probably want to fetch with Fabled Passage to get my green sorted right away. Haven't seen much of Umori in action yet, but we've gotten close to casting it a few times. So opponent on a mono white life gain deck it looks like. Apparition's gonna be nice. And then for now, probably just play Lotus Cobra. Next turn play Knights. So I can play Temple Garden Tapped if I want to. And Skyclave Apparition can exile Heliot potentially, which is a card that's otherwise very difficult to deal with. Play Soul Warden into Daxos. And the Priest can attack since I'm not gonna trade for my Knight. But they decide to stay back. Ooh, Blast Zone. Could have also searched it up with Knight, but Blast Zone's great in this matchup. So what am I doing? I can just Blast Zone, get rid of all the 1-drops. Which is reasonable. And then I suppose Knight could also uh, provide some extra mana. Get Fable Passage. So I want a Blast Zone. And then probably just play Shalai. Or I can uh, Apparition the Priests, which is maybe better. So our opponent's board disintegrated. All their opponents got a nice follow-up here. Pride made into Alsade. Another apparition is great. So Knight can get another Fabled Passage. Then we can play Shalai plus Apparition. And I'm okay trading my Cobra at this point, I think. And now we can sink a bunch of mana into Shalai's ability to 
go over the top and yeah, opponent explodes. So another great matchup for Skyclave Apparition and also showing off the power of Cobra plus Knight to generate a ton of mana with Fabled Passage. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play and what do we think of this hand? It's a bit land light, don't have any accelerants besides Knight as soon as we find land 3. But it's not a terrible hand either, so I think I'll keep. And then turn 2 we go to the side between Priest and Ooze. Zelfran Void, turn 1. Not sure what to make of that. Okay, just playing an Ooze since we have a backup. So if the first one dies, it's not too bad. Guardian Idol, alright. So it looks like a ramp deck to me. So I could just Apparition the Idol to slow them down. Or I can play Knight and maybe next turn Apparition something else. Maybe they play Hedron Archive, that's a juicier target. Ooh, Karn a great creator instead. What's it gonna search up? We do get to kill Karn here at least. Opponent finds Stone Cold Serpent, find target for Skyclave Apparition, and Archon of Amiria is fine too here. So I gotta kill Karn, um, and then probably just play Archon. So our opponent's lands will probably all come into play tapped now. Opponent can only cast one spell. And if that is a 4-4 Serpent, we can just exile it. Now because of Archon I wouldn't be able to play Elves and Apparition if I'm willing to use Knight to search up an extra land. So I think I'm just attacking with the knight then. Now our opponent could still potentially ramp into Ugin the Spirit Dragon, which is going to be very difficult to beat. See a Forsaken Monument, so that's why they're playing all the colorless lands. And that's going to double their mana, essentially, to potentially cast an Ugin, so... Yeah, hopefully that doesn't happen, otherwise I'm just going to cast Yasharn. And then, what land do I get? There's no land that really saves me here from Forsaken Monuments. Maybe get a Crawling Baron so I can start hitting them. And then I can still use my ooze, although there's no creatures to eat, so I guess I'll wait. And again, we can't play elves because of Archon. Let's see if they've got an Ugin. They do. Yeah, that's gonna be game over here, I'm afraid. Minus four. I do have a Crawling Barons, but it's gonna be a little bit short of killing Ugin here. Luckily they don't get anything from Apparition since Stone Cold Serpent has converted mana cost zero. And they can also potentially block with Guardian Idol here. Which is a 4-4 thanks to Monument. So, 
I guess I'm better off playing Shalai instead of hitting Ugin for two. And then they can't kill my elves because of Shalai. Will among the ceaseless hunger. Nice. All right, GG's. Don't have any answers to Ulamog. And Ugin is going to be a problem as well. And a Golos, because why not? Alright, well. The game plan against Ugin is to prevent my opponent casting it in the first place. Which doesn't always work out. Forsaken Monuments being 5 mana means we can't exile it with Apparition, so we don't really have any great answers to it. I'll just pass and let my opponent kill me. GG's. My flames burn beyond Let's see if they want to activate Golos on the way out, or just activate Barons. Could technically flash and Containment Priest to chump here, but this game is very much over. Crawling Barons can be activated more than once to just put two plus one plus one counters on it, so that's another nice mana sink in these Forsaken Monument decks. Alright, that should do it. Our opponent doesn't need to worry about Settled Wreckage because we have Umori as companion. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Lurus of the Dream Den, so could be a Spirit Dancer deck, could be a Pyromancer deck. If we're up against a Spirit Dancer deck, this hand's not gonna cut it, since we don't have any interaction, no Knight to search a Blast Zone, no Skyclave Apparition. So. Is this hand any good against a Pyromancer deck? I've got some ramp into Gergroth, which, you know, is not bad. Priest shuts down any reanimation shenanigans, so... I think I'll try this, hinging on the fact that it's good against Pyromancer. But if we're up against a Spirit Dancer deck, it's gonna be quite weak. And yeah, turn one thought sees means Pyromancer can take away my L for my payoff here, we'll see. It could just take Priest if they have some claim to famous in hand. Takes Containment Priest, but this did enable turn 2 Knight of the Relicary now, which is going to be pretty sweet. If we draw lands, we can play turn 3 Gergroth. Phyrexian Tower. So this is definitely a matchup for Yasharn. And there we see the rat for Young Pyromancer. Another Lotus Cobra. Could also play Double Cobra this turn. But I like getting the knight out there. Because double cobra doesn't do much if we don't draw a land next turn. Alright, nice, we found a land. So, yeah, I think I'm just gonna play Gergroth this turn while we can. And then Triple Lotus Cobra is still going to be nice to make extra mana with Knights. Village Rites, end of turn, sacrifices Supplier to draw two cards. And the Pyromancer deck did pick up more answers to cards like Gargaroth now with Blood Chief's Thirst, which they can kick. But it looks like they don't have it, and our opponent just explodes. I mean, yeah, turn three Gargaroth, if you can't kill it right away, it's going to 
run you over pretty quickly. So yeah, keeping our hand definitely paid off and we got lucky with the turn 3 Gergroth. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand I would say. Got a couple hate bearers and then knight to help us cast Yasharn, which finds more lands. And then we can use those lands to maybe activate the various lands we search up with knight. Opponent on a green ramp deck with Arboreal Grazer. Just play the planes for now. Ooh, Thalia could be nice. Can slow down any planeswalkers my opponent's trying to cast. Solemn Simulacrum will work just fine. Alright, so we'll play Mad at Reliquary. No point in attacking. So our opponent's got quite a bit of mana, it's gonna cultivate. They're down to one card in hand, so hopefully that card's not Ugin the Spirit Dragon. Alright, so we can play Yasharn. Can also do something else with a knight if I want to. Limvala doesn't seem super useful right now. So just getting Yasharn in play seems more important. And then... I guess Knight can get Fabled Passage. And we can leave Fabled Passage uncracked, which is useful if we find a Lotus Cobra, maybe. Gonna be a Lanor Elves, which we can shut down with Limvala. Although my opponents got all the mana they need anyway. Double Containment Priest, probably not the matchup for it. So, what am I doing here? Knight could get Bonder's Enclave, which seems kind of nice. And then. I can start drawing extra cards. Although I might want to get Limvala in play first. I'm gonna jump to draw a card. And I'll just keep up Containment Priest so that if they do play Ugin and minus four, I can flash in Priest and activate Barons to maybe pressure Ugin. And yep, there's Ugin. Costing one more mana because of Thalia. But we should be able to kill Ugin at least. Alright, so opponent's top decking, we've got some more gas. And gotta hope they don't have more Ugins. Field of Ruin can kill my Crawling Barons, unfortunately. So... Probably just go Cobra plus Knights. And if they ever kill one of my lands with Field of Ruin, I can make use of the extra mana by flashing in Containment Priest. I 
explore. And cultivate. Alright, so my opponent's still out of action here. Just has a bunch of lands. Archon of Amira can also punish cards like Explorer. But for now we just want to increase our pressure as much as possible. So Knight probably still wants to make mana here. Get Fable Passage. And then I could put Umori in hand. Play Umori. And then play Ooze plus Elves. I guess I can attack first. Alright, I'm gonna dodge another Ugin pretty much. Think we'll be fine against anything else. Field of Ruin, sure. Opponent's looking at my graveyard. Alright, and we got there. So after being defeated by Ugin the Spirit Dragon, we managed to take him down in our second attempt, and yeah, we got to see Umori in play at long last. In the practice matches I played with the deck, I did get to play Umori a few additional times, and I don't think Umori gives away too much information during mulligans, since most people will expect to face a Mutate deck or maybe a Goblins deck that's playing Omori with Phyrexian Tower. And then overall I've been quite impressed by this Green-White Hate Bears deck, definitely exceeded my expectations, and it's probably a deck that improves in best of 3 compared to best of 1, since you can just tailor your sideboard to have a few more Hate Bears that you can then side in for the corresponding matchups, and you can always decide to take out Umori after sideboard and bring in a few non-creature spells if you need them. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.